Hey, internet friends and fellow magicians and entertainers, things of that sort. And here we are again. I'm with my friend Matthew Fallon. Over, he's over in Denver, and got, <laughs> you got snow over there. I understand. <laughs> A whole six inches and growing. Yes, uh, in Minnesota, yes. Minnesota, we got some snow too. But what are you going to do? You just deal with it. <laughs> I'm going sledding this afternoon with my kids. That's what I'm going to go to. <laughs> So speaking about gigging, um, we're gonna, I want to get into cruises and stuff because you got a lot of experience in the getting the cruise gigs and stuff. But doing uh, regular events. Speaking of snow, are you? Uh, do you recall? Uh, did you do a lot of gigs in in Denver? I'm assuming when you're in California, you didn't get that snow issue when you're gigging. Yeah, no. You don't want to know what I, I've in the ten years I've lived in Colorado. I've done all but two shows in this state. Oh, wow. uh, uh you know as far as just live entertainment i they're all all ships or a corporate event that takes me out of the state so um yeah i haven't done a whole lot here uh which is really interesting i moved here after already having a blessing of a full schedule on the ships and so i just have just kept that going uh it's got a dynamite airport colorado springs i'm about an hour south of denver so uh man i don't want to give that up <laughs> that's really easy with all the flying that's involved especially with doing ships well, I remember when I was doing full time years ago, and I I got everything in in one load. I didn't have to load a lot of stuff. I just my all my cases were on a two wheel cart, mm -hmm. and I remember trudging through the streets yeah. with that cart. And I thought I should put skis on here, uh, not wheels. <laughs> some big overinflated tires with some knobbies would be nice, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> help you. Yeah, put a motor on there. <laughs> wow. Yes, sir. See, I I. I applaud you then. I applaud you because I, I don't know what it's like to have to go to a gig locally in extreme weather. I haven't had to experience that yet. You just deal. With so, so there you go. Well, let's talk yeah, about the cruises then. Just uh, I'd like to uh, ex you know pick your brain a little bit about how you get into the market and how you get the gigs. I remember back in the day when Carnival was hiring everybody, but you had to know how to mop a floor and uh, pick up cocktail glasses yeah. to be able to get the yeah. job. <laughs> But um, right. Have you ever been on the boat when the when the weather is rocking back and forth? Oh, yes. Our our first contract was uh, I only I've been doing ships since two thousand one, which is compared to many is is not a whole long time, and compared to most, it's it's a very long time. Our first contract was on the Celebrity Mercury ship, and it was during Hurricane Michelle, um, October November ish of two thousand one. And our captain comes on. We'll never forget this. On there for about five weeks, but somewhere in the middle of that time was you know individual one week cruises. In the, in the middle of a cruise, he says we're gonna have to redirect our itinerary. Sorry, we're gonna have to skip. I don't know what it was. Grand came in or something tomorrow because of this hurricane. Oh, you big hear moans around the ship and people are all of a sudden getting cranky. Well, he's kind of look out for our our well being. That's what you got to think about. Well, that night. Now that was midday. That night, though, you know, it's normal evening on the ship. It's cruising. It seems smooth. My wife and I are sitting outside one of the bars, just having a cocktail, and people going to dinner, just business as usual. The ship all of a sudden just goes a big list, and we're at watching this bar. All the bottles just go smash, you know, and they just <laughs> come crashing down. And uh, and this happens a lot, but that was our very first working a ship experience. And talk about jumping right in. <laughs> so you didn't uh, rethink your uh, career at that point. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, well, there was a moment. I'm like, no, the pay's too good for this. I got to stay. I got to. I got to tough this out. Come on. <laughs> so speaking of the gigs, I know a little oh. bit. I never worked cruises myself. I thought about it, and then part of what what deterred me is the the idea i mean i'm more of an introvert the idea of sitting on that boat for three or four or seven days with the same yeah. people asking you the same questions i, I don't know if i could handle it because i've done trade shows and you get that kind of same yeah. thing the same thing the same people oh my god so uh i haven't yeah. really done any ships yeah. but i understand that isn't there like booking agencies that actually you know, would do an audition for them and then they put you on the boats or how does that work or you don't call them boats. Those are you're at. <laughs> They're very, very big boats, <laughs> gun boats. Um, uh, yes, nowadays I would say even even in the uh, just before we started working ships, about ninety nine two thousand is when the all the entertainment managers 
departments, you know, the heads, wanted to work through agents. Think about it. If you're an entertainment director for Royal Caribbean and an entertainment director for Celebrity and all the different cruise lines, you want to get calls and contacts from 100 entertainers or do you want to get just individual five or 10 calls from the top agents representing their hundreds of acts? So when we got our gig, it was the good old fashioned days of sending out VHS tapes directly to the cruise lines. We didn't have an agent. And it was just good old fashioned direct marketing, call, market, call, market. Um, when we were on board, we were referred to an agent from a fellow entertainer that we met to simplify the process going forward. He said, you got to get an agent. I've been out here for about oh four or five years longer so far at that point, right? And he refers to his agent and we've been with her ever since. So yes, you, you want to submit and get signed on with a cruise line entertainment uh uh, agency and they will then sell you to the various lines okay then do you mind sharing how do you get into that agency i'm assuming they get tons of tapes from people mm -hmm. is there a way to oh, be yeah. prepared yeah they say yes yeah you know at the different agencies will somehow have showcases like for example there's one called don casino uh and they they hold showcases around the world uh no joke and, and some cruise lines actually flipping over this side on real caribbean they'll go around and hold open auditions around the world too. Um, so for the most part, you could simply just do the old fashioned, give them a call, start with an email if you like, or call, hey, I'm so-and-so entertainer. Uh, this is what I do. Can I send you some promotion material? I'd like to join your roster. Is that possible? And uh, do that to every single agent. Now know that a lot of them are impacted. They have a lot of, lot of acts. So uh, just just keep at it. That's where the good old fashioned marketing still applies is that you just want to contact as many agents as you possibly can. Got it. And uh, I know that working with some of the agents here, I mean, those are kind of gone agencies. I suppose they're still good for the, the niche, like the cruise boats and everything. But around locally here, mm, work with agents, yeah. you got to stay in front of these people. Yeah. Like, I remember me and Dave Stahl, we used to go to Jamaica and then we'd uh, take a day and we'd just drink beer and write postcards to all the agents and clients in Minneapolis. You know, I'm in Jamaica. Remember, don't forget me. <laughs> uh, see, out of sight, out of mind. You're right. Uh, mm -hmm. And in fact, you know, that's, that's, that, that's one of the tough bits about doing ships is that your contact, your, your mind kind of loses contact with land. And so you were very smart with David doing that. And um, because people say, Oh, I got ship gigs. I got an agent for this industry. I'll be set. Well, you got to keep up marketing in all venues if, if you want to stay busy. Yeah, because there's somebody else that's coming in right behind you. They say you're only as, oh, good, as, for sure. you're, you're only as good as your last show, they say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure who said that, but I've heard that. And I don't, some, it depends on how you feel, if you agree with that or not, depending on how your last show was. <laughs> it could be, I'm only as good as my next show. <laughs> so, you know, if, if there's a situation where you're the key guy and all of a sudden you're on a boat for a week, yeah. And then all of a sudden, um, Cargill comes in and tells your agent, I want a magician. Well, he's out mm -hmm. on a boat. I can't get him. So they need somebody else mm -hmm. to put in that place. And if that person does a good mm -hmm. job, and that person is there a lot, that other guy is going to get the gigs. However, mm -hmm. there are plentiful gigs. I want to kind of yeah. call that out. A lot of people sometimes, you know, magicians, they think conscious, uh, scarcity consciousness, like, oh, what if I don't get all the jobs? You go to any hotel in any mm -hmm. major city and look up on that board, and there's things happening from nine in the morning to two in the two in the and the next day. There's always something going on at the hotel. That's true. So don't think That's scarce. True. Absolutely, and, work and for all of us. <laughs> uh, awesome abundance Abundant everywhere. everywhere. Absolutely, Absolutely. I, fully I fully agree. agree. I fully agree. You got to stay, stay true to what you're doing. We've got a little bit of a delay because of the snow, I'm assuming, because you got snow there and we got snow here, but uh, we're just dealing with it. Um, I don't like to do these too long. I like to just give people some good gold nuggets. We do have other um, videos that'll be longer and um, there will be doing some stuff, I think, on location. Uh, like I was thinking of going down to Eagle Magic Store. Uh, have you ever been to Eagle Magic Store? No, I haven't. Is it cool? It's, well, it, it's in a different location, but it used to be right downtown Minneapolis, and it's like a real magic store with the old cabinets and stuff all over the walls. Oh, nice. Eagle Magic Store is like uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's like one of the oldest magic stores in the world, possibly the. It's old, well over 100 wow. years old. Oh, and those how yeah, epic! Have, and how close are you to it? Um, I, me and Dave used to drive down there every single morning on our bikes when we were kids. 
So close, right? That's right cool. now it's uh, cool. maybe a 15 to 20 minute drive. Cause he, he moved, ah, I'm on my way. I'm coming to Minnesota. He moved the store down to Burnsville, but he used to be right downtown Minneapolis. Everybody knew it. Eagle magic store and Houdini's been on the counters. You know, it's, it's been around for a Love while. It. Love it. Anyways, it, it's one of my favorite things to do. And uh, uh, well, as far as traveling and being able to find a local magic shop, if they have one and go and, and it's, it's been a really cool thing. i uh, being able to, you know, travel around the world and go to different places. One and, in Barcelona, Spain, and uh, you know, uh, in in south of France, and find these little old magic shops, and some will cater to some ventriloquism or some joke items or or what have you. But yeah, it's some really cool stuff. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to close this one out, my friend, and then we'll uh, talk later. I appreciate you again taking the time, and uh, as we expand, stay tuned. You got so, it. peace, love, and happiness. This is Magic Brad. Sign off. Thank you very much, Matthew. Let's keep it going. Bye bye.